picture of the two of them where Joe Scarborough is like this. I think he might have his feet up on the table. It's like a power pose <laughs> for him. And she, she is up there. This isn't, I'm not dressed for this, but I'm, I'm going to show you. Okay. Yeah, come here. Come here. Thank you. Oh! Yes. <laughs> That's what she did. And he's sitting there in the power position like, yeah, do it, baby. Pose. I'm Alex R. Wagner, and this is No News is News, where we make fun of the news because the news isn't really the news. There is no news. This is the news. No news is news. Episode 41. Guys, I guess just don't follow the sky, you know. Oh! Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Joe Biden um, decided to send some missiles over to Ukraine. So boom, boom, boom. Oops, did I just start World War III? And then after he started World War III, he was like, nah, never mind. Actually, uh, Middle East, we're done. We're done. Uh, I, it's, it's over. I have some good news before from the Middle East. I just spoke with the Prime Minister of Israel and uh, Lebanon. I'm pleased to announce that their governments have accepted the United States' proposal to end the devastating conflict between Israel and Hezbollah. Anybody else find it fascinating that soon as Donald Trump is elected, both Ukraine and Russia start scrambling for positions before January 20th when the negotiating table happens? Can we just get a Dana White pay-per-view for the negotiating table of Putin and Trump? But yeah, so after he, oops, almost started World War III because they're battling over positions because they know the negotiating table is happening for that one. The other one, they're like, oh, this little spat over here in the Middle East. Well, that was just a self-induced wound because now we're going to start doing ceasefires and stuff because Donald Trump is going to be president. Also in the news, but not in our videos, was tariffs, tariffs, tariffs. Yesterday, Donald Trump decided to threaten Canada and uh, Mexico with tariffs. Mexico responded by saying, our southern border is now closed. And Canada uh, was like, wait, you can't do that to us. We're Canada. And so we'll see what happens. But I bet you anything we do. <sighs> These countries that we're giving these tariffs to, they have tariffs on us as well. So just, there it is. But other than war in the Middle East and war overseas and World War III possibly happening and gobble gobble the turkeys of uh, peach and blossom. According to experts, peach weighs 41 pounds and loves to eat hot dish and tater, tater tots and cross-country skis. You know, dreams to see, but his, the, the real dream he has is to see the Northern Lights, I'm told. He lives by the, the motto, keep calm and gobble on. <sighs> There's just one other thing that is, I, I'm just so excited about with Donald Trump, is that we can now finally on the internet once again speak freely. They're going to introduce podcasters to the White House briefing room that will get a front seat in front of legacy media. It's over. Finally, the last four years of a placeholder where everybody was like, wait, you're going to start a streaming service, but then you're not going to use the internet appropriately. It's over. These companies are done. And uh, kind of prove my point. Here's, the most controversial figure ever, Nick Fuentes, just taking a roast at Brett Cooper on uh, The Daily Wire. Something you'll only see on this show because, again, you got either the Daily Wire side or you got the fucking Daily Show side. But I'm on no side. I'm on the funny side. And Nick Fuentes making fun of this phone case is absolutely funny. This is uh, Brett Cooper from daily wire she reviewed it so that's how you know it's good but you're just happy to hang out here on youtube and listen and learn and first of all that makes me so happy and i'm so grateful that you guys are here i'll wait right here and i'll tell you about my new phone case that is launching right now in the middle of this video it has all of my favorite I things know. on it and guys no, it has no. fun comment section things on it you're gonna love it the link is dude first of all 
<clears throat> don't you just love this shit where people put like stickers on their laptop, stickers on their phone case, and everyone thinks they're so quirky? It's like, yeah, everyone does that. And the memes all looked like this. You're not drinking, are you? Remember, we're going to the farmer's market at 8 a.m. Somebody said, <laughs> my producer is already just... Farmer, farmer's market. I love how they threw in another little trad Easter egg, little trad nugget. Not only is she a wholesome chungus wife, uh, but we're also going to the based farmer's market for non-seed oil. Uh, I will not eat the bugs. Are you? Remember, we're going to the farmer's market... Like, how is this funny? Somebody said. In other news, Kamala Harris came out of her hole right before Thanksgiving, and uh, she has a message for everybody. Uh, you guys raised $1.6 billion, and we lost. You gave all that you could to support our campaign. Because of your efforts, get this, we raised an historic $1.4 billion, almost $1.5 billion from grassroots supporters alone, the most in presidential campaign history. Nearly 8 million donors contributed an average donation of about $56. I don't, I don't think like complimenting people on the money they raised um, is a good thing when you wasted the money. Take it from a uh, film director. If I walked in after a blockbuster bomb and I was like, yo, I know Transformers 17 costs $300 million. And I know no one went and saw it. But we wasted $300 million. <laughs> also, I can't even fathom $1.6 billion going down the drain, them apparently being $200 million in the negative, and yet they wasted all of this money in advertising or whatever. There's not a single movie budget that reaches that. Think about the propaganda tool they could have had if they just took a movie producer in February, built a blockbuster by the summer, and released it. They could have had their movie back before the election and won by making like Metropolis like Trump is a, a retard or whatever. I don't know. But if they would have wasted it on something good, then something good could have happened from this. I just recently watched Casablanca and Casablanca was literally distributed and released right around when the Allied forces were overtaking the Axis powers in the north of Africa i.e. Casablanca. We orchestrated a film premiere in the United States and around the globe around us invading a country. Yeah, that's good propaganda. Kamala Harris, $1.6 billion. Bad propaganda. Kamala Harris, so where is our our father? Our, you know, the guy that, you know, gee golly, Tim Waltz, where are you? I know it's incredibly disappointing now. And look, candidly, it's in, it, it's a bit scary um, because there's a very different vision uh, that's being put out there. But now more than ever, we need the light to shine through. Um, we need to be able to be that uh to be that hope for the neighbor who's really wondering. We need to be that uh, anchor for the folks who are wondering what's next. Tim Waltz is very scared of Donald Trump because Tim Waltz now realizes there is no place for a man with no balls. There's no place for a man with no balls. Kamala Harris looking like the soul has been sucked out of her as she tells you, don't worry, they can't take your power. They've taken mine. I just have to remind you, don't you ever let anybody take your power from you. You have the same power that you did before November 5th. And you have the same purpose that you did. And you have the same ability to engage and inspire. All right. Well, now we got our number one show in America, the best show on television now, The View. And... Whoopi Goldberg's like, you know what? We just got to wait and see so we can figure this out. And um, this Mexican lady is not having it. She is not waiting and seeing about anything to do with Trump because Trump is evil still. 
So, so I think what what we're all saying is we're going to sit and watch. Wait, we're going to wait and see because we can't do anything I'm, else I, except. I, I, I'm not going to wait and see. I mean, this guy is what told you us he's a retribution. What are you going to do? What are you doing? Do? 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 Like, there's not nothing to be done until you know what you're fighting. It's it's pissing in the wind doesn't help. You just right. get a wet face. But I mean, but I like have no, what I'm saying is help. I yeah. have no false expectations that at 78, he's going to all of a sudden no turn yeah. into no a human being. Like and I'm not going to spend, I spent, I, spent, people tune out. I spent weeks telling people that he was apocalyptic. I'm not yeah. going to change now. No. It's, it's not it's still changing. the same You're now. not treating every single thing like a I think that's when we lose credibility. Well, here's the thing. You lose credibility in many different ways. If you don't know what you're talking about and you accuse him of something, then then they're going to blow it back. That's why I say we need to wait and see exactly what you're going to do. See, the facade is falling off for the people that were just narcissists. All of the narcissists in the room are like, all right, Trump derangement syndrome over since he can't run again and we just have four years of this. We just have to deal with whatever this is. Uh, the rest of them, though... Yeah, good luck. Good luck being on the Trump derangement syndrome through 2028. Are you just going to transfer it over to J.D. Vance? Or what are you going to do here? How are you going to stay on the train of delusion for yourself? Because Whoopi Goldberg, the Young Turks, um, Pierce Morgan, Chris Cuomo. I'm trying to think of the others. There's a lot. Basically, everybody that stayed on Twitter and didn't go to Blue Ski. But Whoopi Goldberg is probably the only person on the panel that actually has woken up because this next clip exists. Yesterday, Special Counsel Jack Smith had to move to dismiss the January 6th stuff in classified documents cases. He still insists that he built a strong case against bo on both fronts, but cites that the DOJ rule says that a sitting president cannot be prosecuted. Yeah. Now, you know who continues to deny all charges. <laughs> and the dismissal comes shy of about four years since the Capitol insurrection. So after all that time and money, are we going to get a rebate? <laughs> We're not getting any money back? <laughs> okay, well. Nothing. I'm starting to like Whoopi Goldberg. I don't know. The end of 2024 is a weird time period. Like, get a lot of polar shifts. All of a sudden, Whoopi Goldberg's making sense. Whoopi Goldberg's making sense, but you know it's not making sense that one lady who was so dumb that she literally flashed her pussy on a major blockbuster and then said that she didn't know that they were going to film her. So, yeah, Sharon Stone explaining to us that we're not educated. You know, Italy has seen fascism. Italy has seen these things. You guys, you understand what happens. You have seen this before. My country is in its adolescence. Adolescence is very arrogant. Adolescence thinks it knows everything. Adolescence is naive and ignorant and arrogant. And we are in our ignorant, arrogant adolescence. Finally today, uh, Project 2025. Yeah, they, they said it wasn't Trump, but it was Project 2025. And then now, Project 2025 is in the White House, and Project 2025 is evil. So, what you got to say to Project 2025? Friend on, on the left, uh, Brian, because you tweeted uh, or posted to X on 25th of November about Project 2025. You got one of the architects sitting right next to me here. You said Trump just named to architect to Project 2025 Russ Vought to his cabinet. But hey, thank God mainstream media didn't just take Trump's tepid denials at face value and slap them in their headlines before the election. So look, you've got an opportunity now. You've got one of the other architects sitting right next to me. What do you want to say to him? Uh, <clears throat> I mean... Now's your I, chance. I, I don't know. I, no, that's very yeah, articulate. I mean, I, thank I, I, you. I, I mean, I don't know what you want me to, like, I don't, I don't have well, anything to say you obviously have a big that, problem uh, with Project 2025. You've got I, one of the I architects. Do. Okay, okay. So, I, have so let's, I have a question so, for him. So, okay. Geraldo to the rescue. I will see you all probably after Thanksgiving, if not for a really fun, epic, 
crazy Thanksgiving episode if there's some news to be spread. Maybe we murder Barney again. I don't know. Have fun. Happy gobble gobble. Gobble gobble. Yum yum. America's back, y'all. America's back!